Okay. All right. It's a rainy, wet Monday morning, and I said that today I would talk about um, feeding dogs with kidney issues. And so the big thing with kidneys from a Chinese medicine perspective is that the kidneys are the water element. So it's really all about moisture in the diet and um, providing things, good morning, Teresa, um, providing foods that are going to support the kidneys. So the kidneys are the um, life essence or life force for the body. And we're born, if we're born healthy with good genetics, we're born as people with 100 years of life in our kidneys. So if we take good care of our bodies and our kidneys and our minds, um, then we should live to be 100 years and then the fire in our kidneys slowly burns out. Happy Monday. Thanks, Eva. It's nice to see somebody perky and happy on Monday morning. <laughs> so um, so the, the kidneys are really our life force. And when the kidneys are gone, we're gone too. Now, the good news with that is that we and animals can still live and function pretty well with only 10% kidney function. Um, not going to feel your best, look your best, but you know, you'll still keep kicking. Um, <laughs> the cat's really mad because she didn't get her eggs this morning. <laughs> so she's pacing. Um, so uh, we really want to keep the kidneys happy throughout life. And this is another one of the reasons why I am not a dry kibble fan because the kidneys like moisture and kibble has almost no moisture. So it's harder on the kidneys to be fed a lifetime of dry products without moisture. And that's why you find those dogs trying to drink so much to try to catch up all the time. Um, so for pets whose kidney function is starting to decline, and we can see this very early, there are things like polycystic kidney disease that pets can be born with. Um, Megan, my head receptionist, has a dog with only one kidney, um, kind of found out accidentally. The dog didn't even have symptoms. Uh, I think we did an ultrasound for something else and went, oh, look at that, there's only one kidney. So, um, you know, those kinds of things can happen. Good morning, Cheyenne, good morning, Pat. Um, but usually we do see the kidneys starting to fail later in life. Hi, Renee. Um, and we can see kidney failure or kidney disease. Hi, Dave. Uh, secondary to other diseases. So high blood pressure, mitral valve disease can contribute to um, kidney disease. And kidney disease, on the other hand, can cause high blood pressure. So high blood pressure is definitely something that needs to be managed. Um, to keep the kidneys happy because when the blood pressure is high, all that blood that's filtering through all the kidney tubules with high pressure, it just keeps pounding against them and actually causes the kidney tubules to die. So we do want to manage high blood pressure. That can be done with medication. It can be done with diet. Um, Hawthorne is an herb that is commonly used to lower blood pressure and increase heart function. Um, so you'll see that in a lot of the formulations. I think the RX Vitamins Formula CV has the Hawthorne in it. Uh, there are some Chinese herbal formulas that also have it in there. Um, so when we're looking at a good yawn morning, exactly. <laughs> um, so when we're looking at trying to, uh, dry food can cause chronic dehydration in cats. Is this true? And with evidence or an internet rumor? No, it's actually really true because they're, there, to rehydrate the food, and I've got some really good blog, blogs on that, Adam, if you go back and look, I did a series of five blogs on kibble and the problems associated with it. There's also a chapter about that in my first book, the From Needles to Natural. But when a pet eats dry food, that kibble has to get rehydrated somehow. So it's the moisture from the body that rehydrates it for digestion. So it's coming out of the cells of the body. So what we see in cats and dogs that are fed dry food all the time, they, no matter how much they drink, they will, they will make a very, very concentrated urine as long as the kidneys are working. So we want to see the urine-specific gravity somewhere between... 1.020, which we call 1020, between 1020 and 1030. In kitty cats that are fed 
dry kibble only, we will see urine concentrations of 1065 to 1075. And that's why they get crystals because it becomes a super saturated solution. It is just so concentrated. And that's not what we want. So whenever I get a urinalysis back on a blood panel and I see a urine concentration that high, the first thing we do is call the people and say, you've got to change the diet. Your animal's in deep trouble here. We're going to get crystals in the urine if we don't already have them and we're, we're affecting the kidney health. So we wanna switch those animals over to something that's going to be a high moisture diet, whether that be canned, um, raw, frozen raw that's been warmed up or uh, freeze dried raw that's been rehydrated or a home cooked diet. So, um, so if we have a pet who we've already determined that they're having some kidney problems, if they have pup loaf all the way, yeah, absolutely. If they're um, not already on a high moisture diet, that's the first step. You've got to get them off the kibble and you've got to get them on something that's high moisture. You got to check the blood pressure and that is something that is often overlooked. Check the blood pre pressure, manage it if it's not being managed. And then we want to look at the ingredients that are in the diet. So depending on the stage of kidney failure, there are certain things that you'll start seeing um, changing in the blood panel. One of those is the phosphorus level. And remember that calcium and phosphorus always have to be in balance. And what happens in um, kidney failure is the phosphorus is not cleared. So phosphorus builds up in the bloodstream, but the, the body always wants to keep that in balance. So it will pull calcium out of the bones in order to balance the calcium and phosphorus in the bloodstream. I have a sharp hay with amyloidosis and on kibble, yeah, I'd get them off. Um, so uh, it wants to balance the calcium and phosphorus. So when it's pulling it out of the bone, then you end up with osteoporosis and brittle bones. And we see that in older women uh, a lot, even without kidney failure. Um, the same thing can happen in dogs. We don't recognize it as much, partly because their lifespan is shorter, but it certainly can happen. I had a horse that broke her um, tibia because uh, she was in her 30s and she had osteoporosis. She was just running around in the paddock and snapped her leg in half. Um, so osteoporosis occurs, we just don't pay as much attention to it. So we're starting to see that a lot of animals that are in kidney failure, veterinarians are starting to supplement with vitamin D3 or calcitriol uh, to try to keep those calcium levels up. And we want to either feed foods that are low in phosphorus or we want to use a phosphorus binder to try to help keep some of that phosphorus in the diet from being reabsorbed into the bloodstream so that we can keep the calcium and phosphorus in better balance. There are a lot of phosphorus binders out there. Um, Amphigel is one that has been used for years. It doesn't taste that great. It's a liquid that the dogs and cats really don't like it that much. Um, uh, RX Vitamins came out with a new product uh, a couple years ago called Phosbind, which is a tasteless white, very smooth powder that mixes well with the food. So as long as they're eating, you can get that in pretty well. Um, the, the company that makes, oh, there's a, a probiotic that is, um, oh, boy, it was left, Azadil. Uh, they also make a phosphorus binding product, um, and I'm not going to come up with the name of that either. Uh, but if the phosphorus is starting to creep up, then we do need to add supplements or make some major diet changes. So when we're looking for proteins in diets for kidney failure dogs, if you talk to traditional Western veterinarians, they are going to want your pets to be on an extremely low protein diet. And in my mind, they get the protein too low. When you look at some of those diets, they're looking at anywhere from seven to 14% protein. And one of the problems that happens in kidney failure is the kidneys are losing protein through the urine. So that's why we see muscle wasting. These animals are losing protein. We're feeding them very low protein diets and they start breaking down muscle. But all their kidney problem client pets on Hills can prescription. Yeah, I haven't seen any improvement. Yeah, well, the good news is if they're using canned, they're at least using high moisture. The thing that really gets me is the prescription kibble for kidney diet. Does that make any sense after everything we've just talked about? No, it makes no sense at all. So if you are going to use prescription diet because you're at a loss and you don't know what else to do, at least use the canned product. Don't use the dry kibble uh, because you're really doing your pets a disservice with that. So, um, 
If you are looking for a low phosphorus protein source, your best bet is going to be green tripe. And I have a lot of my clients with uh, big dogs that they're looking to make something on their own. Um, they will make homemade diets using raw green tripe, which has all the natural probiotics, natural enzymes. It just is really stinky. But let me tell you, this stuff is good for these dogs. The phosphorus level is lower, so we don't have to worry as much about that creeping up. Um, I like to add to that some real kidney. And you know, so now we're taking stinky green tripe and adding stinky kidney and talk about a smelly diet, but it works really well and then we balance it out. Because the kidneys are the root of life, from a Chinese medicine perspective, we want to feed things that are also the root of life. So that's gonna be things that start life, seeds, nuts, eggs. So I use a lot of eggs for my kidney patients. Um, if we have to lower the fat, but we need to or lower the protein, but we need to get some weight onto the animal, then we can raise the fat a little bit. One of the problems is that um, pets with kidney failure very commonly will have some pancreatitis issues along with it. I got an email about this the other day. Um, but sometimes it's actually a false reading on the pancreatitis because some of the enzymes that the pancreas produces are cleared through the kidneys. So when the kidneys are starting to fail on the lab report, you'll see those kidney enzymes, the amylase and lipase going up and it may not be a, a true pancreatitis that's happening, it's just that the enzymes are not getting cleared as well. So tripe livers and heart with milk thistle, that's pretty good. Um, the milk thistle is helping the liver, it's not helping the, um, the kidneys as much, but uh, certainly is going to be helpful in just keeping things cleared. Um, things that I like to use to help drain the body and help clear things would be turnips and radishes. Um, dogs and cats with kidney failure are going to uh, tend to be, to be anemic. The kidneys make the hormone that tells the bone marrow to make red blood cells. So if the kidneys are getting bad enough, that's going to start to fail as well and we'll start to see these pets become anemic so they need blood tonics. That's where those egg yolks come in and they're a good source of fat as well and the fat soluble vitamins. Um, uh, other blood tonics would be dark leafy greens, so the kale, collards, spinach if you don't have oxalate problems, uh, a little bit of broccoli. Um, so we want to, uh, let's see, anything red and orange, beets we talked about the other day when we made our diet. Uh, so those are the kind of things that you can put into the diet for these pets. Um, some of these guys, when they're getting further along in their kidney disease, they can't tolerate near as much protein and they're starting to lose a lot of muscle mass. So sometimes we have to add some carbs in to bulk them up a little bit. And I find that a lot of them don't like to eat early in the morning. And that's where my warm oatmeal in the morning comes in real handy. A lot of my kidney failure dogs, if we mix oatmeal um, with just a little bit of cinnamon, maybe a little bit of either almond milk or goat's milk, um, they uh, almond milk has to be without carrageenan. Um, a lot of times that's enough to get them going in the morning, just something warm to warm them up. A lot of these dogs are losing muscle mass, they're cold. I call them my old cold kids. Um, so these guys very commonly will do very well on crock pot diets. Not that they can't do okay on raw. Some of them will do just fine on raw, but not all of them can. Um, when they get more advanced in their kidney disease, you're going to have good days and bad days. You will have days where they just don't want to eat. They're feeling a little nauseous. We do need to manage that nausea. Uh, ginger tea, a little bit of ginger, some ginger cookies, slippery elm, uh, a little peppermint tea. Those are the kind of things that naturally can settle the stomach. If they're getting far enough along in their disease, um, I will grab for a Serenia. It kind of is a wonder drug and it will keep them from vomiting. It can be used once every day. Uh, it just makes them feel better. And it's not, in my opinion, it's not fair to withhold a drug that doesn't have side effects that will make them feel better if 
if they're in that stage of disease. <laughs> nutrition, nutrition is so confusing to me. Well, you know what? I've been doing this for a lot, a lot, a lot of years. Um, and that's why a lot of people do consultations with me because I'm giving you general outlines, but you know, for you to sit there and say, well, how much of this and how much of that? And I don't really know. And there really aren't any um, good uh, cookbooks or, or recipes out there because I cannot put together a cookbook that says for every dog in kidney failure, you need to do this. For every dog with cancer, you need to do this because they really are individual. And um, what might be good for one uh, dog with kidney failure may not be good for another dog with kidney failure or a cat. Um, some of the dogs are not old and cold. Some of them are old and hot because they're, um, their cooling system has burned out. So um, sometimes we have to modify things a little bit. Okay, uh, so that kind of gave you a, a basic overview of some, some kidney things that you can do. There's a lot of good supplements on the market. There's um, a, an amino acid supplement that we've had really good success with in the last couple of years uh, called Aminovast. It used to be called Renovast. There was a labeling problem. They had to uh, take it off the market, relabel, rebrand. It was not a problem with the product. It was a problem with labeling. Um, but we, it's just an amino acid sprinkle capsule. We've been using it a lot and it does seem to stabilize the BUN and creatinine fairly well. Acupuncture is phenomenal for animals with kidney disease. Uh, we've kept some dogs alive uh, and, and happy, not just alive, but alive with a good quality of life um, for years uh, with even, you know, with horrible lab results. So um, I do monitor the lab results to tell me how to tweak things. Um, but they can look terrible on paper and still look pretty good in, in, in actual life. Okay, everybody have a great day. Stay safe if you're in the path of the storms. We'll talk tomorrow.